Holy Church, let's stand to our feet. How many of you are excited for the night of worship? Come on, we are so excited. We have Joel Mott from California will be saved, our good friend with us. Listen, before we start the night, I want to prep our hearts. In Joshua 6, it's a story of when the Jericho walls fell down, and it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, I have handed Jericho over to you. I have also handed over to you its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all your fighting men. In fact, do it for six days. Have seven priests get trumpets made out of ram swarms. They must carry them in front of the ark. On the seventh day, you're going to march around the city seven times. Tell the priests to blow the trumpets as you march. You will hear them blow a long blast on the trumpets. When you do, tell the whole army to give a shout. The wall of the city will fall down, then the whole army will march up to the city, and everyone will go straight in. And I want you to hear this, because maybe some of you are here tonight, and you're walking in silence in the middle of your six days. Maybe you're on day one, maybe you're on day six, but on day seven, God is wanting you to give a shout of praise. So tonight, this can be your day seven tonight. Come on, tonight, there can be victory, there can be breakthrough, there can be healing, there can be miracles. So are you guys ready to give the hugest shout of praise? Watch every single wall fall down. Are you ready, church? Ready? One, two, one, two. You guys doing good? All right, come on. Come on, I just believe false gods are going to crumble tonight. Come on, even over this city, over this region, over Southern California. All right, come on, just sing this with me. Here we go. I raise a hallelujah tonight. Let's sing. Hey, I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Come on, I raise, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Come on, we sing. Hallelujah. 
happens when we begin to enthrone Jesus. Every time, you know, I read throughout the Bible and a, a pure offering, an acceptable sacrifice was offered to the Lord. He met it with fire. Come on, I want to meet with fire tonight. I need the fire. I don't, know, I don't know about you guys. I need the fire of his presence in my life, man. It just, it doesn't work without it. I need his fire, I need his power, I need his glory. The manifest presence of Jesus. So come on, just for 30 seconds, all across the room, why don't you just look straight into the eyes of Jesus tonight. Just you and the Lord. Come on, you and the Lord. Just look into those eyes of fire. Into that beautiful face of the Son of God. And just begin to tell him what he means to you. Just begin to tell him. Just begin to tell him. Just begin to describe what he's like. Come on, let it go, let it go. It's you and Jesus. Who is this father? Now just begin to lift your own melody just for a second here. We're going to sing another song. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a fun night. But just for a moment, just lift your own melody. Whatever 
that song is, whatever that tune is. It doesn't have to be perfect. I inhabit the praises of my people, Psalm 22. He's coming to live in the praises of you and I tonight.
with your Savior, you don't want to pick up those things that once held you down and bound. So tonight, I want you to lift your hand to heaven, and I want you to say, Jesus, I surrender. I surrender my life. I surrender my will. I surrender my ways. I surrender my offenses. I surrender my hurt. I surrender every bit of pain. I surrender every single bit of sickness I've been dealing with. Jesus, come and have it all. Come on. See, Jesus, come and have it all. Jesus, come and have it all. Jesus, come and have it all. Oh, yes, Jesus. And oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, sing it to him. Sing to King Jesus all my days, all my life. Come on, we're tired of living it always. All my days.
on, just lift your hands right where you're at. Man, I just feel the fire. I just feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, just receive it. Another minute here. Come on, just lift your hands. The fire. It's the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm sending you a helper. John the Baptist, right? I baptize you in water, but there's one coming. We'll baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, we just receive. Tonight we receive, Lord, the boldness that comes with your fire and the faith that comes. Get us tonight, Jesus. Come on, just tell the Lord, get me tonight. <laughs> get me tonight. Come on, everyone in this room. Baptize us tonight, Jesus, with your fire. We receive your fire right now. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. amen. Come on, come on. Well, I'm going to just get into the Bible really quick, and then we're going to do some more worship and just keep flowing here. You guys cool with that? I don't really want to leave this place. I'm just... That was, that was amazing. You can sit if you'd like to, or you can just stand, or you can come to the front, or whatever you guys want to do. You guys doing good? It's going to take me a second to gather myself. You guys are crazy. <laughs> well, I'm going to dive into the Word, then we're going to go back in. These guys are going to come up and... We'll just continue encountering the heart of Jesus tonight, but I'm just honored to be here uh, on this Wednesday night, and I'm always blown away. I've been here a couple times last, what, two years or so, and I'm always just blown away by the hunger. On a Wednesday night, here we are, man. You know? You guys are crazy. And I'm, it always blesses my heart, and so it's just an honor to be in the house of God with you guys tonight and see your beautiful faces and um, go somewhere together, you know, in the heart of Jesus, the heart of the Father. Um, my name is Joel. I run a ministry called California Will Be Saved. And uh, we, just, we just do this. We take worship to the cities and the beaches and the, you know, the, the public squares of our state, and we just enthrone Jesus. We say, Lord, this is your state. This is your generation. Come and have your way, and, and we preach the gospel, and we invite people to come and know Jesus, and we've been doing this, we've just been on a rampage the last three years, and every place we go to, you guys, we just worship and preach the gospel, and God meets it with power. People are getting saved, and they're getting healed, and they're getting baptized in the ocean, and they're getting delivered, and they're getting plugged into the local body, and they're getting activated, and so um, that's kind of a little bit, what do I do, and I don't know, I'm just a, I'm just a dude that loves Jesus and uh, hungry to see him move in, in our state. And um, I love the Bible. If you guys have your Bibles with you, you can go to Daniel 3. I hope you all are ready, man. This, this passage is fire. This is like probably one of the most gangster acts of worship and faith that I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean... This is crazy, all right? I'm just gonna dive into this here. Daniel 3, you know, this is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Daniel's three friends. And in their time, they're getting, they're getting threatened. And there's crazy uh, oppression happening in the nation. And Nebuchadnezzar is telling everyone, you know, you gotta worship this golden calf. You guys familiar with the story a little bit? It's okay if you're not. Yeah, and it's, it's insane because he's ordering everyone, no matter what their background is, no matter, you know, if they've grown up a Christian or not, they're, they're ordered to worship this false god, okay? And so let's pick it up in verse 16. Um, Nebuchadnezzar is threatening them. If you don't worship, then I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace. You guys ever had this threatened against you before? Yeah, me neither. I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace. I mean, this guy is not playing. 
verse 16, we pick up, you know, Nebuchadnezzar kind of catches wind of it. And uh, this, is, this is their response to him. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. And here's this, just pause there. This next line is what I want to hone in on tonight. And I think there's actually a key here to breakthrough for our personal lives, but breakthrough and revival in a, on a corporate level. This next line is like the mic drop, man. These guys are savage, right? We, we, we don't need to answer you. Our God is surely strong enough, right, to deliver us. The next line, but if not... Even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Boom, my job, right? <laughs> Insane. In the face of being shoved into the fiery furnace, yeah, we don't, <laughs> we're not compliant. I like what the message says. It says in the same verse, your threat means nothing to us. Whoa. If you throw us in the fire, the God we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up. <laughs> but even if he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of a difference, O oh, king. We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. Isn't that fire? All right, I want to pause here. Honestly, you guys, what I'm believing for is a mentality shift in my generation where we go from kind of this elementary level of relationship with God to, I mean, anybody want this kind of faith? But the thing is, you know, like when a, when a baby is born, they are reliant on their parent, on their father or their, their mother, right, for their provision and their well-being. And, and so I want to establish, that's not bad. But it takes a level of maturity to come to this place and say, you know what, even if none of the blessings come, even if the promises that I've been promised, right? You guys have been promised things. You have dreams. You have visions, right? There's things we're contending for. It takes a mature person to say, you know what, God, even if I don't see any of that, I'm not going to bow to the false gods of culture. I'm not bowing to whatever the enemy is throwing my way. I'm not bowing to this, the lower gods, the false gods, and the false ideologies. I'm not, I'm sorry. It's like I've graduated past that elementary level, right? Are you guys tracking with me? And, uh, man, this is what I'm believing for. It, even if I don't see an ounce and you guys know, I mean, our God is a, a perfect father. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. I mean, just buckle up. You serve him, and you lay your life down for him. I mean, I hope you're ready for blessing in, in your life, right? But the heart posture, even if I don't get it, we're not bowing to the false gods, right? I remember when I was, uh, this was like four years ago in uh, 2020, it was the height of the pandemic and fear running rampant and all this craziness, and there were promises that I received from the Lord about revival breaking out prior to that, right? And so I'm believing for these things. God, you said there's going to be revival. You said there's going to be, you know, worship breaking out in the streets, on the beaches. There's going to be baptisms breaking out. There's, my generation is going to be mobilized and worship and you know we're gonna reach the lost all these amazing promises and uh faced a, a lot of disappointment actually in 2019 the campus I, i'm from pasadena and uh the campus that is a historic place dedicated to be a, they called it u.s center for world mission you know a training ground our school was my my discipleship school we met there we had our classes we had worship nights you know there were promises over this land it was uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the call and Lou Engel, but their headquarters were there for a long time. He's a spiritual father of mine, and 
There were promises that he was believing for. And uh, there's a building on the campus called Ma Auditorium, and Ma is my name. And I felt so connected to the kind of the prophetic storyline of this place. 2019, we get kicked out of Mott, right? All of a sudden, in our school, we're like a bunch of, of nomads. We're looking for a home. Kicked out of there. It gets sold to a secular organization. They start doing construction on the campus. Uh, I live right next to the campus, and every morning, you know, I wake up, and I'm looking, and they're doing construction. They put this ugly pink fence up around the campus, just the ugliest pink you can imagine, right? Every morning, I wake up, and I'm like, God, what happened? All right, I moved here on a word that you're going to send revival, and, you know, this is my auditorium. We're believing for these things. We get kicked out of there. Of course, shortly after that, the pandemic rolls around, early 2020, and it feels like fear is running rampant, and now all of a sudden, we're supposed to eat supposed to be isolated, and, you know, we're supposed to stop gathering and stop, at one point our governor's like, stop singing, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a singer. <laughs> this is what I do. And the Lord brought me to a crossroads. I know you guys, you know, this is, I'm just being real. This is our journey, right? I know I'm not the only one. I hope this is relatable. You know, we're holding these things, and we're believing for them. They're good things. But the Lord is bringing me to a crossroads. It's almost like he asked me the question, Joel, what's the depth of your faith here? Because, you know, I'm starting to get grumpy. Right? I'm starting to get jaded. <laughs> God, what? You know, the pandemic was like the exclamation mark on that whole season. Like, oh, my goodness, the disappointment, the discouragement, you know. Coming to this crossroads, Joel, what do you really believe? And I get so kind of fed up with my own, unbel- uh, my own grumpiness, right? I was like, I don't want to be 70, year old, 70 years old and I just like jaded and upset and offended. Come on, Joel, I got to move on past this, right? Like, this is not who I am. But it was hard. And I remember the Lord bringing me to this crossroads and, and I knew I had a decision to make, you know, back to the decision table. It's either every promise that he's spoken is true or it's not. And if it's not, then forget about it. I'm just going to retire. Do what people do. I don't know. What, you know, what do, I, what, what do we do? Or every promise is yes and amen. And it will come to pass. And I was like, Lord, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. This is not what I had in mind, right? But I said, Lord, I'm choosing tonight. Lay aside my unbelief. I'm going to lay aside the doubting and the skepticism and the questions. And uh, I'm choosing to believe, right? And I'm, I'm like David, like, help my unbelief. And then this dream comes to me. And uh, in the dream, we're standing on, my friend had this dream, we're standing on the coast of California and we're worshiping Jesus together. And in the dream, as the worship is going forth, Jesus appears to us in the flesh. He brings my friend to the edge of the water. He's like, do you see the water? Do you hear the sound of it? Do you see what's coming? And the ground shook. And Jesus said to my friend in the dream, the battle in the land of California has already been won. The ground has been prepared. And now is the time for the reigns of my spirit. He said those words, my friend said he looked to the ocean and a massive tsunami wave was coming from the ocean and it flooded the whole city. He woke up early in the morning, shaking under the power of God. He sends me the dream. He's like, Joel, I know that that wave is symbolic of a wave of God's spirit that's coming to our nation, right? And that dream catalyzed me right after I just had this moment with the Lord. I'm choosing to believe, Lord, I don't feel this right now. I'm choosing. And uh, that whole thing has sent us on this trajectory and we've been seeing God break out like crazy. But my point here, I'm sharing that, is because I feel like there's these crossroads moments where we have a decision to make. Let's read on in the story of, of Daniel. Let's pick up um, uh, verse 25. It just gets better and better, you guys. This is insane. Right? 325, Nebuchadnezzar exclaims, Look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Whoa. What is going on here? Like the spirit of wisdom and revelation just came on Nebuchadnezzar. The 
sinner. <laughs> he looks like the son of God. Verse 28 through 30, kind of the end of the, the passage here. This is Nebuchadnezzar's response, right? Because he's, he's blown away. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their house, houses shall be made an ash heap. This guy is so extreme. Because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then he promotes them in the ranks of Babylon. Okay, so what's going on here? It's kind of like they're at a decision table, right? I'm going to throw you in a furnace if you don't worship my God. I want to get to that, this level of faith. You know, I, I got all grumpy. I, had a, I needed a whole season. Lord, I repent. Forgive me, my unbelief. These three men of God step up to the plate. Yeah, we don't really, we're not too concerned about that, Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, God's going to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, like, we know what we stand for. And then what happens? You know, we just read this here. What's happening is they take a stand. They have a little bit of courage and faith, right? Doesn't mean they didn't go in the furnace. I mean, they went into it, but Jesus is right there with them. And then the heart of Nebuchadnezzar kind of does a, a whole turn. And he sees the power on display. He sees the miraculous power of the Son of God. And his heart changes. And then all of a sudden, he's like, what? yeah, we're going to worship their God. And the promotion blessing comes on their, on their life, right? Are you guys catching this, the story here? So my question is like, man, what if one, is there one man, is there one woman in this room tonight? In the face of the oppression, the pressure, that would just get so locked in on the face of Jesus, that when hardship and trials come, you know, when the enemy tries to take you out, because the enemy is real, and things happen. But is there a man, is there a woman even in this room tonight that will stand up in the midst of that and say, you know what? No, I believe in God. He's stronger. To, he, he can even deliver me. But even if he doesn't, like I've made up my mind. You're not talking me out of this. It's honestly, it's like an act of worship. These guys are in there. You know, the whole thing was around worship. I just want them to worship the false god because it's their attention, it's their focus, it's their whole world. What captivates their eyes, what captivates their hearts, it's a worship issue. Purity of worship provokes the presence and power of God in our There's this story in Luke chapter 24 where it's these two dudes that had walked with Jesus, right? They've seen the, the wonders and the miracles and bodies raised from the dead. And, and then Jesus dies. We just celebrated Easter weekend, right? Good Friday. He dies. And they're, they're bummed out. And they're, they're basically, they're, what they're doing is they're giving up. They're going back home, back to Emmaus. And they're discouraged and their hearts are heavy. And like, man, we thought he was the one. You know, we thought he was the Messiah. We thought that he was going to restore our nation. We thought we could find salvation in this one. And they die. And then Jesus just shows up on the road. How does he do that? I don't know. He's God. He can do what he wants. He shows up. Like, I guess it's before he resurrected. I don't, like, he shows up on their road 
what are you guys talking about? And like, oh man, this Jesus guy, we thought he was the one, he was gonna deliver us, he was gonna save us, and we saw all this stuff happen, but he died and we're sad. And Jesus begins to break down the scriptures to basically take them to Sunday school. Like, didn't you know that the Messiah was gonna have to die? Right, and he opens up the scriptures to them and he starts to explain the prophecies what was prophesied about the Messiah. He was going to have to die so that he could be raised again. They get kind of to a fork in the road, and um, the, the, two, the two guys convince Jesus to come and eat with them. And uh, so he stays, and they break bread, and it says the moment that Jesus took the bread and he broke it, it was like the veil lifted off of their eyes, and they saw that it was Jesus. And then, in that moment, he vanishes, right? And they're sitting at the table, the two of them. And this phrase has marked me, you guys. This phrase has marked my life. Luke 24, verse 32. They said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road? while he opened the scriptures to us. Didn't our hearts burn? And then, of course, they get up and they're filled with hope and they go back to Jerusalem and they begin to tell everyone about their encounter, right? Complete 180. I had this vision. We were just in Seattle and during one of the worship sessions, I had a, a picture and I saw this picture of a horizon, and there was this tall, strong figure of a man on the horizon. It was like a silhouette, and um, he didn't say a word, but he just kind of was standing there, and I was behind him, and he was kind of looking like this. And I was behind him, the horizon and mystery of adventure was beyond him. And he looked back, and it was almost like he said, are you coming? Are you coming? And immediately I thought of Luke 24. He, once again, he comes down their road. These are two guys that walked with Jesus. I don't know about you guys. I, I relate to these guys, right? When I read this story, I'm not like, oh, man, these guys are just like, come on, get it together. When I read this story, I'm cut to the heart. Because I've encountered Jesus. I know his goodness. I've had these moments of face-to-face -face encounter where the fire of his love has burned in my heart. And then I've had moments where I just like, I feel like I've lost him. And then, you know, I look back to the seasons of my life before God really got a hold of my heart. You know, kind of up and down. And I see myself in this story. And here's Jesus once again. He shows up in his grace, in his mercy. Here I am. Once again to reveal who he, who he really is. The truth of who he is. Right? We have the ideas. We have the preconceived notions of who he is. Once again, in reality, here I am. And I just feel this tonight, you guys. I want to give an opportunity. I feel the presence of Jesus even as we're worshiping. Like I feel him calling this generation. And when I say this generation, I mean everyone alive right now. I feel him calling us. You know, when I saw that figure, I knew it was Jesus on the horizon. Are you coming with me? Six years ago, I responded. I said, Jesus, I'm giving you everything. Like I'm no more. Right? I want to live for you wholeheartedly. I'm going 100% in. In the last six years of my life, I've been the most crazy, life-filled, purpose-driven, like, meaningful years of my entire life without a doubt. I mean, the Lord has taken me on such crazy adventures across the nations. And I feel this invitation tonight. Yes, it's scary. It's like when Jesus called his disciples, right? He walks up to Matthew. Matthew, follow me. <laughs> what? Matthew's just in his cubicle job. 
The next line, Matthew got up and followed him. Wait a second. Something happens in the depths of our soul when we come face to face with the Son of God. No questions asked. I'm following you, Jesus. And I feel like that's what's happening tonight. We're encountering the heart, the love of our Father, the love of the Son, and we're saying, would you draw me? It's like Song of Songs, right? Draw me, and I will come. The last line of that story, come away with me. I saw that picture on the horizon. Jesus, are you coming? Come away with me. So can we all just stand to our feet right now? I want to do this simple, super simple call, you guys. And I saw this tonight as I was preparing that we're just going to come into an encounter with Jesus. It's already happening tonight. If you're in this room and you've never given Jesus 100% of your life, can you just be bold right now? I'm not going to do this. This is not going to take long. Just raise your hand. Come on. This is amazing. Thank you for being bold. You're saying 100%. I want to give Jesus 100% of my life. Thank you guys for being bold. It's incredible. Oh, this is about to get good, man. The second group of people, you're here, man, I, I've had these moments, but I've lost my way and I'm, I'm battling things and there's things in, in the way. I just need, I need a touch. And I know I got to get 100% right. I know I got to get clean tonight. If that's you, can you just be bold? You're battling something, just raise your hand. You're like, man, I, I want to respond to that. I want to come all the way. Jesus, I want to come away with you. Take me on your adventure. It gets exciting, you guys. It gets wild. Thank you guys for the show of hands. These guys are going to start to minister. Before we do that, can I just wonder if you guys in the front, can you just take a, maybe a, a st I know there's not much space. I just want, if you just raise your hand, can you just come to the front right now? Just be bold. I want to pray for you. We're going to go into this moment of just encountering. Can you just come? Amazing. I'm going to lay hands on you. I want to prophesy over you guys. Come on, this is incredible. So good. Keep coming, keep coming. If you have, you know, if there's a golden image, so to speak, in your life that you want to crumble, if you want to lay down at the altar, this is an altar tonight, and it's free for anybody. What happens at the altar is you bring something to die. So before I lay hands on you, before we pray, I want you just, just you and the Lord right now. Come on, this is your moment. This is amazing. What is that thing you're bringing to die on the altar tonight? This is not just a place where we just kind of sing some songs and we hope for the best. No, we're bringing something to die so that resurrection life can be raised up again in our lives. Are you guys with me? So what is that thing you want to die? Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's passivity. Maybe it's complacency. Whatever that thing is, you know. I don't need to tell you. You and the Lord right now, just have a moment. I'm not going to rush this. This is what tonight's all about. Come on, throw it on the altar. And in your mind's eye, just throw that thing down, man. Throw it down. Throw it down. Throw it down. I'm not going back. Just tell Jesus, I'm not going back tonight. I'm getting free tonight. I'm getting free tonight. Whatever that thing is, lay it down. right there even if he does not I see us right now our whole, the whole house tonight we're crossing over we're crossing that line tonight with confidence and with boldness something is unlocked in the depths of our soul even if he does not I will worship you Jesus come on 
God's raising up worshipers for such a time as this. Even if we don't see the things, even if he does not, I'm not bowing to the false gods. Ushers, we can lay hands and let these guys minister. I'm going to lay hands on you guys too. Come on, let's just have a moment.
different things you've been trying to get help in so many different areas with different people which is amazing but the only thing that could ever satisfy us is Jesus and sometimes we turn to everything else come on we turn to everything else but the one who made us the one who knows us the one who loves us and so tonight it's time to turn our attention back to Jesus and so right where you're at you can lift up your hands to heaven and tonight just begin to say God I turn my eyes back to you begin to say God I turn my eyes back to you Jesus he's not a last resort he's not a plan B but if you would just focus back on him he says I will come back into your life and I will heal you and I will restore you so we're just going to sing this out one more time Nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else, Jesus. One more time.
think we passed out the communion cups. This is how we're going to close tonight. Is we're going to take communion. Come on, you guys feeling all right? Feeling good? Just stay in this place for a moment. Just been getting wrecked by the... re-experiencing the power of the blood of Jesus, you know, his broken body, what comes with that. Um, if you have your elements, we're going to take the bread first, but uh, you know, we just celebrated Easter. I love this time of year. We reflect, we bring our attention to just what he went through to bring us freedom and complete healing. He knows 100%. It's either it's 100% true or it's not. By his stripes were healed. So take the bread. I'm going to pray. There's this, you know, Colossians, it says one of the things about the blood of Jesus. And when, when he went to the cross, the act of the, of the cross on Calvary was it stripped the enemy of every power to accuse us. Right? The accusation of the brethren. This is like the enemy's full-time job, accusing you here. You did this, you did this. Look at that, you could shut have done this. When Jesus goes to Calvary, Colossians, Paul explains this whole thing. He stripped the enemy of every power and principality that would accuse the brethren. Who's that? It's you and me. Because you know, this is what keeps us bound. This is the accusation. Right, sin, we sin, we fall short, and then there's the accusation. Well, the blood speaks a better word. Pour it out on Calvary. It is finished. He knew what we'd have to go through. I mean, he went through it himself. Far worse. So tonight we take the bread and we get free. <laughs> Come on, we don't have to be all serious right now if we don't want to. We can be happy. There's a lot of joy in this thing, I promise. There's a lot of joy, man. I've been forgiven. The bread, the broken body, there's healing. Go ahead and take the bread. God, we thank you for the bread. Come on, this is going to seal the whole night. The blood of Jesus. Come on, anyone else? I'm getting free of all the accusation, man. I'm not living under the accusation. It's not my portion. You can be totally free. Power of the blood. Lord, I just thank you for your blood. This is how we're sealing tonight. The precious blood of Jesus that set us free, Lord, of every accusation, every bit of shame and guilt, the power of sin broken. You went down into the depths of the earth. You grabbed the keys and you came back with resurrection power. And now that's available through your blood. So we take your blood, Lord, and we declare freedom. Come on, just say freedom with me. Freedom, freedom. Now just say joy one time with me. Joy, joy, joy. Right, it's Isaiah 61, the garments of praise instead of heaviness. Joy instead of mourning. Beauty where there are ashes. Go ahead and take the blood and just lift a shout as we drink. Come on. Come on, lift a shout. Come on. God, one more shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Can we say thank you to, to Joel for being here with us tonight? That was amazing. Well, tonight obviously was a very special night. On Wednesdays, we do a lot of worship, but tonight was a full night of worship. And so I just believe that what God has begun tonight, he's going to be faithful to complete it and finish it in your life. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to do. If this is your first time here, I just want to welcome you and come back Sunday because we want to greet you and we have something very special for you. We have an Ibrew Life Cafe on Sunday in our patio. And so if you come that Sunday, why don't you fill out a Hello Connect card tonight? Tonight, you're going to go out through these doors, get a Hello Connect card and bring it back Sunday. We want to make sure to say hello to you and give you a free drink on us. All right, the worship is not over because we are about to give tithes and offerings. All right.
listen, tithes and offerings and giving is a part of worship. And I love the people who are clapping. I love what we have here. It says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Listen, giving is not something to get back. Giving is because you can't help but say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. So you know what? I'm going to entrust you with this, Lord, and watch God multiply it. So you can um, use these envelopes. If you're old school, you want to write a million-dollar check, you're more than welcome to. We also have our app. You can scan this, or you can also drop it off in any of our boxes back there. Let me just pray for that real quick. Jesus, we thank you so much for every person here. God, for every person that's giving to your house, Lord, I just pray that you would give them a revelation of what it is to pour into your house, Lord, into what you're doing. And I pray that you would bless them, God, overflow over their life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're almost done, y'all. All right. We have a few announcements for you. Take a look at the screen. time. This is for all you young adults. This is for you. sin as we come up emerged. Woo! This Sunday, we are having water baptisms. It's going to be wild. I have two more things to tell you. Sunday service time. So this past Sunday, we tried four services. How many of you were here for that? Yes, let's go. All right, well, we were just testing something out after Easter services. We wanted to see because during Easter, we were at full capacity, and we want to make sure that there's always space enough for you and your families. That being said, we tried it. We tested it. We're going to go back to our regular three services. Okay, you guys are ready for that one. <laughs> we have our 8.30 a.m., our 10 a.m., and our 11.30 a.m., but listen... This is the time where we have to grow and start inviting people. People need the church. So don't get too comfortable with three, but let's just get ready to see this house being filled. That's what it's all about. So Sunday, again, 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. You guys got that? Yes. Okay, last thing, and you can stand up to your feet. Our grand opening for our children's and youth building is this Saturday at 9.30 a.m. God is good. So if you want to come on out to the grand opening, we're doing a whole ribbon cutting, the whole nine. You get to actually go inside our building. It's a beautiful thing that has been happening here at Elevate. So make sure that you come and join us Saturday at 9.30 a.m. And then for my young adults, 18 to 28, this Friday at 7 p.m., we have our mantle night. Our first one was incredible. People were just getting to feel connected. You don't feel alone there, I can promise you that. You will not feel alone. So make sure that you scan this QR code, it's gonna be there, join us. Lift a hand to heaven. Jesus, we thank you so much for this night. God, I pray that, that Lord, that we know that you are the fourth man in the fire. That God, that you can do anything, anything is possible with you. So we just pray that you would continue to stir the fire within us, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for what you did tonight. And we say that you would continue to do it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Our pastors can't wait to see you Sunday. Remember, three services. Good night. <laughs>